Hey, how's it going, everybody? It's Pat Stecker coming to you with a digital currency slash cryptocurrency uh, video. I do these videos every once in a while, and today we're going to be talking about something that's been in the headlines recently, uh, El Salvador becoming the first country to adopt Bitcoin as legal tender. The government passed a law, uh, the president introduced it, and it was voted on by their government and... Um, overwhelmingly approved so what I'm gonna do now is come not really read through this article but just go over some of the basic facts and then compare it to some other situations around the world uh, so what happened I'm sure you've probably all heard about it by now but just in case you haven't um, the president of El Salvador Nayib Bukele introduced a Bitcoin law um, which was approved by a supermajority of the El Salvadorian Congress. Before this, the legal tender of the country was the U.S. dollar. Now, if you don't know about El Salvador and their economy and their country, it has a lot of problems. Uh, the cause of those problems depends on your interpretation of history and your politics. So I won't get too deep into that, but it has a lot of crime, a lot of violence, a lot of problems. Um, there were some explanations and reasons given as to why El Salvador wanted to make this move um, and, and make Bitcoin a legal tender. Um, so first of all, what the law does is allows the government to regulate Bitcoin and, and for citizens and government institutions and companies to use Bitcoin as a legal tender um, for transactions um, they can be public transactions private transactions uh, can be for uh, legal reasons purchasing things purchasing titles and so on um, they can show prices in Bitcoin uh, you could pay your taxes with Bitcoin and um, the transactions that happen and exchanges in Bitcoin will not be subject to capital gains tax so uh, one of the reasons that were given um, for why they decided to do this is that approximately 70 percent of el salvador does not have access to traditional financial services so adopting a cryptocurrency is seen as a way to increase financial inclusion which would increase uh you know financial activity in the country and uh, would help the government it will help uh, everyday citizens it will help companies and there's a um, company called strike which is going to help and work together with the government of El Salvador to implement this the biggest I guess concern that people have or critique that they point out right away is that Bitcoin swings wildly in price. It's very volatile as are almost all cryptocurrencies. So it's not very suitable as a currency when that happens. So that's one thing that remains to be seen. Just one other thing that I'll say about the volatility issue that I haven't heard anybody in the media say is that yes cryptocurrencies tend to be very volatile but these countries uh, like el salvador and venezuela for example are much more at risk for economic disasters and problems uh, for example in venezuela they've had runaway inflation going on there for a while because of a combination of disastrous government policies as well as u.s sanctions against their country so they, I think in 2018, they had to create the new Bolivar. So they had to reissue their currency because it was so debased and so devalued. So one thing that they did to try to keep up with the, you know, rapidly changing prices of everyday items like gasoline and bread and so on uh, was to use Dash, the cryptocurrency Dash. They, they didn't do it to the scale that El Salvador is doing it, like accepting it as a legal uh, tender like a, a national law but 
Um, I know that a lot of businesses in Venezuela were accepting Dash at the time. Uh, and so if you think about it from their perspective, the volatility of these cryptocurrencies might actually be less than the volatility of something like runaway inflation. And it's also sort of like along the lines of almost like diversification, how we would look at that from an investment standpoint where you might want to have some precious metals, you might have some cryptocurrencies, you might want to have some stocks and so on and so forth, different assets of different classes because they'll respond differently to different economic conditions. So these smaller countries like Venezuela or El Salvador, by having a national currency, a traditional paper national currency, and by having a cryptocurrency be a legal tender, they'll be able to deal with these economic shocks and problems um, a bit more safely and uh, by diversifying that way so i think that the volatility could actually work in their favor if you look at it from their economic perspective however this is very interesting now as i said i want to compare this to a couple of other situations around the world one of the reasons that they gave for el salvador to do this was that 70 percent of their citizens don't have access to basic economy the bahamas is the first country in the world to introduce a a central bank backed digital currency um, and they did so actually for very similar reasons now the reasons for the lack of uh, access to uh, traditional banking in the Bahamas is because of geographical reasons they have uh, many islands it's a country made up of many islands and archipelago the reasons in El Salvador are probably very different poverty crime um, you know people just same problem a lack of access to banks and participation but for very different reasons the bahamas uh also has uh the resources and the backing of other countries to help to create a central bank backed digital currency and by the way the bahamas uh, dollar is also pegged to the u.s dollar so it's Kind of similar in, to El Salvador in that respect is that they're both basically using the US dollar as their currency. The Bahamas decided to do a central bank backed digital currency and El Salvador decided to use Bitcoin. Probably because El Salvador doesn't have the resources, countries don't want to invest in setting up a central bank backed digital currency in a country like El Salvador, which has all kinds of problems corruption, crime, violence instability the bahamas doesn't really have those problems so that's why i think they went with a central bank backed digital currency and el salvador is going with a cryptocurrency um, also cryptocurrencies are especially bitcoin it gives you a lot more privacy right so um it, it probably can help to reduce some of that crime to begin with um but it's in both cases going to encourage more uh, financial inclusion at least ideally now another thing that's interesting about this is that this is being touted as el salvador becomes the first country to do this and that's true it is the first country but it's not the first government to do this um i mentioned in one of my shows a while back i believe it was one of my um weekly restack shows that miami had uh basically passed a local law municipal law that that workers can be paid in bitcoin and people can pay taxes in bitcoin so there have been smaller instances of this happening i reported on that back in february right after it happened so um the mayor basically um tried to have this campaign where people use bitcoin as an actual currency and so and this has happened in other locations around the world as well and um you know with el salvador uh u.s foreign policy definitely plays a big role in this as i said the history and your politics will will guide how you interpret that but another thing that seems to be happening around the world and this has been talked about a lot but i think this time there's clearly some more weight behind it is de-dollarizing 
So Russia has been buying gold like crazy. China, same thing. China has also been offloading U.S. debt. I mean, China, you could almost say that they financed the Iraq war by how much debt they bought from us since that time. And um, Japan as well. They also, not that they're our rival like China is, but uh, they've also been selling U.S. debt more recently. Um, and Russia has... China has, many countries have. So um, they're trying to uh, weaken the strength of the US dollar. Why is the US dollar so strong? Well, number one, the US is the strongest economy in the world. Number two, 88% of all foreign exchange transactions that happen in the world happen in US dollar. Number three, uh, any purchasing of oil that's going to happen is going to happen in US dollars pretty much basically. So that's why uh, sanctions and things like this work. So uh, this article is just talking about how the Russian economy and the Russian central bank and their government is trying to move away from the US dollar. Russia has been um, under the radar, really working hard on creating a central bank-backed digital currency of their own, and so has China. I've talked about China's digital currency project uh, in previous videos. I can leave a link to uh, those videos in the description. Um, the country where I'm in, South Korea, they are also in advanced stages of this. Many countries around the world are in some phase or some stage of uh, issuing central bank backed digital currency or using some type of digital currency. So it's very interesting to see El Salvador, a government, use Bitcoin to do this. Um, like I said, I think they're trying to do sort of the same thing that the Bahamas is doing. Anyway, I think it's very interesting what's happening with Bitcoin and El Salvador and central bank backed digital currencies. And it's definitely, definitely something that we want to pay attention to. One other thing I just wanted to point out, again, I think I already said this, but El Salvador is not getting rid of the U.S. dollar as its, you know, other legal tender. So it's kind of having two going on at once, as far as I understand it. So that is also kind of a sign of um, this is an experiment more than anything else. So I'll be watching this carefully, and uh, I would love to hear what your guys' thoughts are on this situation and what i've said in this video and anything else surrounding this so thank you for watching listening commenting much love and respect